2006. It was the first year of the second half of the first decade of the second millennium, and topping the previous year was going to be tough. 2005 had brought us the birth of YouTube, the return of Doctor Who, and the first Twilight book. Of course, it also brought Hurricane Katrina, an earthquake that claimed over 85,000 people, and the divorce of Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. But hey, nobody's perfect. 2006 was going to have a lot to live up to, and at least on some fronts, it would deliver. James Bond would be back with a vengeance, NASA would make some incredible discoveries on Mars, and we were all about to learn a new trick called tweeting. It was the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. So, we're going to take you through the news, culture, sports, entertainment, and all that was weird in 2006. This is Timeline. Someone cue up Gnarls Barkley's crazy, because this one is all about 2006. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel, and let us know in the comments below your favorite memory from the aughts. Now, are you ready to see what happened the year Pamela Anderson married Kid Rock? We've got all the facts ready to go for you. I'll sing with her. Troy Bolton, where is your sports posse or whatever it's called? Team. Ah. Um, but I'm here alone. Actually, I'm here to sing with her. On January 22nd, the late great Kobe Bryant would carve his name into the NBA record books when he scored 81 points in a game against the Toronto Raptors. Kobe Bryant, 28 for 46 from the field. This would be 18 for 20 from the line and an 81 point game. Bryant's performance would go down as the second highest scoring total in the history of the NBA, behind only Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game against the New York Knicks on March 2, 1962. And just two days later, on January 24th, the Walt Disney Company announced it had agreed to buy the computer animation film studio Pixar for a whopping $7.4 billion. It's easy to understand why. Disney had been distributing Pixar's films since 1993, and in that time they won 19 Academy Awards and earned more than $3 billion worldwide. Not content with just owning Disney, The Muppets, which they bought in 2004, and Marvel, which they bought in 2009, The House of Mouse announced on August 30th, 2012 that they were buying Lucasfilm and pretty much everything that came with it, which included the rights to franchises like Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Disney paid Lucas over $4 billion for his company, with half paid in cash and half paid in stock, making him one of the corporation's biggest shareholders. After 145 years, Western Union announced it would be discontinuing its storied telegram service, effective January 27th. Despite the important role it played in the history of communication, use of the telegram declined, especially after long-distance telephone service became cheap in the early 1980s. Email would then prove to be the nail in the telegram's coffin. And on February 11th, U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney was quail hunting at the Armstrong Ranch in South Texas when he accidentally shot 78-year-old attorney Harry Whittington while trying to aim at a bird. Whittington was hit with birdshot in his face, neck, and chest, and suffered a minor heart attack as a result. Amazingly, after getting out of the hospital, Whittington, for some reason, apologized to Cheney. My family and I are deeply sorry for all that Vice President Cheney and his family have had to go through this past week. This series will take you to the last wildernesses and show you the planet and its wildlife as you have never seen them before. And on March 6th, Baseball Hall of Famer Kirby Puckett, who went to two World Series with the Minnesota Twins in 1987 and 1991, died of a stroke at the age of 45. Puckett had a career batting average of 318, six gold gloves, and 10 All-Star Game appearances, before his career was tragically cut short by glaucoma. Four days later, on March 10th, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO, arrived at its destination on the fourth planet from the Sun, after being launched on August 12, 2005. Over the subsequent decade, the MRO would play a key role in several important discoveries, including the fact that, even today, water still flows seasonally on some areas of the Red Planet. What you're about to witness is strictly personal. A direct, undiluted, unrehearsed, uncensored interview. 
My role is that of a reporter. There was a time when the seven most feared words in the English language were, Mike Wallace is here to see you. But that era came to an end on March 14th, when the legendary journalist finally announced his retirement from the news magazine show, 60 Minutes. He would continue to work with CBS News as a correspondent emeritus. Conducting his final interview in January of 2008, Wallace would die of natural causes on April 7th, 2012. Now you can be a scientist. Trix Yogurt lets you create your own experiments with Cracklin Crystals, free and specially marked packs of Trix Yogurt. And on March 21st, Twitter founder Jack Dorsey sent out the first tweet ever. It said, just setting up my Twitter, with Twitter spelled T-W-T-T-R, presumably to encourage people to abbreviate in the name of saving precious characters, which were at that point limited to 140. The inaugural message was not anything profound but it would launch a service that would change the world for decades to come. 16 years later, on October 28, 2022, Tesla and SpaceX owner Elon Musk completed his acquisition of Twitter, which he would quickly rename X. Musk's leadership of Twitter would prove to be controversial on a number of fronts. And just a year later, he would value the company he paid $44 billion for at a mere $19 billion. And in the early evening of April 2nd, the central United States was hit by a devastating mass outbreak of tornadoes. 66 separate tornadoes would hit across seven states, including Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana. The disaster would cause over a billion dollars in damage and kill 29 people, 26 of which were killed by the same supercell thunderstorm. Then on April 11th, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad sent a shockwave through the world when he announced that Iran had successfully enriched uranium for the first time. Ahmadinejad assured a skeptical international community that Iran would not be building nuclear weapons, but would continue to pursue other peaceful industrial uses of nuclear power. And on April 16th, actor Colin Farrell, then famous for his appearances in movies like Minority Report and Daredevil, reached a confidential settlement with his ex-girlfriend, Nicole Moraine, to keep their 13-minute sex tape private. It seemed like a good idea at the time, two adults having fun with a little video camera. Narain, a former Playboy playmate, insisted copyright law gave her the right to market the explicit video. After Farrell won an injunction against its distribution, however, the two parties were able to reach an agreement. Still the only person ever convicted of being a part of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001, Zacharias Moussaoui was sentenced to life in prison on May 3rd after pleading guilty to all charges against him. Though his connection to and role in the 9-11 attacks has been subject to some controversy, the confessed terrorist avoided the death penalty and remains incarcerated at a supermax prison in Colorado. May 17th was a red-letter day in the history of science. Because that was the day the Human Genome Project published their final chromosome sequence in the scientific journal Nature. Started in 1990, the project's goal was to make a blueprint of the genes and DNA sequences that create human beings. Among other things, the information has helped create and improve treatments for an untold number of medical disorders. Disaster struck again on May 27th, when the Yogyakarta earthquake hit Indonesia. Although the area frequently experiences earthquakes, this particular quake, which struck on the southern coast of Java, near the city of Yogyakarta, occurred at a strike slip fault, leading to an unusually high amount of devastation. The quake caused over $3 billion in damage, injured over 10,000 people, and killed over 5,700. Sadly, on June 6th, musician Billy Preston, often called the Fifth Beatle for his role in the recording of their iconic Let It Be album, passed away at his home in Scottsdale, Arizona, from complications related to kidney disease. In addition to sitting in with the Fab Four, the legendary keyboardist also played with the likes of Ray Charles, Little Richard, Sam Cooke, the Rolling Stones, and many, many more. 51 years after the Beatles' documentary Let It Be hit theaters, Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson released the documentary television series Get Back 
Cut from the same footage as the film, the well-received miniseries showed a different side of the Let It Be recording sessions, including highlighting the contributions of Billy Preston. I couldn't have been clearer. There you are, Emily. How many times do I have to scream your name? A a actually, it's Andy. My name is Andy. Andrea, but uh, everybody calls me Andy. <laughs> Now you can put your ninja skills to the test with Naruto Deluxe Figures. Shadow Clone Jutsu Naruto. Shuriken Attack Iruka. Tornado Attack Sasuke. And Tree Climbing Naruto. You can collect them all. Naruto 5 Injection Figures each sold separately. On June 29th, the U.S. Supreme Court announced its decision in Hamdan v. Rumsfeld. The majority in the case held that the Bush administration lacked the power to try Hamdan and other detainees at Guantanamo Bay before military tribunals that didn't comply with the ordinary laws of the U.S. and of war, including the Geneva Convention. A rock and roll legend died on July 7th when Pink Floyd founder Sid Barrett passed away from pancreatic cancer at the age of 60. A pioneer of early psychedelic rock, Barrett was only with his famous group long enough to appear on their first two albums before being sidelined by mental health problems. Never forgotten by the band, Barrett is believed to be the subject of some of their most iconic songs, like Shine On You Crazy Diamond. And July 30th marked the end of an era when the world's longest-running weekly music show, Top of the Pops, aired for the final time on BBC Two. Making its debut on the first day of January in 1964, Top of the Pops showed performances of the week's best-selling hits for 42 years before falling victim to the rapidly changing landscape of the music business. The final song on the show would be Shakira's Hips Don't Lie. After 23 seasons as a professional quarterback, 16 of those in the NFL, the great Warren Moon became the first African-American QB ever voted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. By the end of his career, Moon had eight playoff appearances, nine Pro Bowls, and is the only man ever voted into both the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. The educational children's animated series, Blue's Clues, ended its run on Nickelodeon. Hosted first by Steve Burns, and later by Donovan Patton, it first premiered as a part of the cable network's Nick Jr. block on September 8, 1996. The beloved series followed a dog named Blue, who left clues allowing the audience and host to deduce her daily plans. Of course, you can't keep a good dog down, so 13 years later on November 11, 2019, Nickelodeon brought Blues back in a brand new show called Blues, Clues, and You. The series had a new host, Josh De La Cruz, but otherwise was pretty similar to the classic series, even scoring guest appearances from the two original hosts. The Blues Clues reboot would run for four seasons and score a handful of daytime Emmy nominations before being canceled in 2024 and removed from the Paramount Plus streaming service. And on August 24th, the International Astronomical Union threw us all for a loop when they removed Pluto's status as a planet, 76 years after its discovery. The demotion came because the IAU had redefined the word planet at their 26th General Assembly. And under the new taxonomy, Pluto was now, technically, just a dwarf planet. G'day, I'm Steve Irwin, and these are highly venomous sea crates. On September 4th, internationally respected naturalist and television host Steve Irwin, famously known as the Crocodile Hunter, died after being attacked by a stingray while scuba diving. The sea creature's barb pierced Irwin's chest and penetrated his heart, causing his death before paramedics could arrive. Irwin was 44 years old at the time of his passing. And on September 19th, the Thai military staged a coup d'etat in Bangkok, revoking the constitution, declaring martial law, and throwing the country into chaos. It was Thailand's first non-constitutional change of government since 1991, and it came on the heels of a year-long political crisis that had engulfed the prime minister and his allies. Do you remember how to read the coverage? No, no, not so well, sir. Look at me. What you do is you go out there and you look before you throw the ball. You look and see where the defense is, and you see where our guys are. You with me? Yes, sir. Then you throw the ball to our guys. You got that? A whole lot of important secrets stopped being secret after Australian computer programmer and political activist Julian Assange launched WikiLeaks on August 4th, 
A well-known computer hacker, Assange was inspired to create the controversial website for whistleblowers by Daniel Ellsberg's famous release of the Pentagon Papers in 1971. After decades of contentious international legal wrangling, Julian Assange pled guilty to one count of publishing U.S. military secrets in a U.S. district court in Saipan. Assange was sentenced to the five years he had already served in a British prison while fighting extradition to the U.S. and was allowed to return to Australia a free man without any further punishment. Do you know what we do here? My section? Sir, yes, sir, I have an idea, Whoa, sir. whoa, whoa. Let's say you have no idea and leave it at that, okay? No idea. Zip. None. On October 7th, Journalist and human rights activist Anna Politkovskaya was shot and killed in the elevator of her apartment in Moscow. Three Chechens were tried and acquitted in connection with the crime. But the fact that she was known for being a harsh critic of Vladimir Putin and was killed on his birthday has caused many to suspect one of his allies was behind the killing. Two days later, on October 9th, the internet search engine giant Google bought the video hosting website YouTube for a cool $1.6 billion. At the time, YouTube was a rising star on the internet, and its staying power was considered questionable. But that didn't stop Google from completing what was, at the time, the most expensive purchase it ever made in its history. Google still owns YouTube today. After being suspected of having a secret nuclear weapons development program since at least the early 1980s, North Korea shocked the world on October 9th by confirming the rumors with its very first nuclear test. The blast was estimated to be in the area of one kiloton, creating uncertainty over whether the North Koreans successfully tested an unusually small device or experienced a misfire of a larger device. Where's Gary? Gary's dead. I'm Jack Donaghy, new VP of development for NBC GE Universal Kmart. Uh, we own Kmart now. No. Hey, my name is Borat. I'm a journalist for Kazakhstan. My government sent me to USA to make a movie film. Please, you look. Those who were lucky enough to witness David Bowie's three song set at the Black Ball fundraiser in New York's Hammerstein Ballroom on November 9th couldn't have known it, but they were seeing the final show of the rock legend's career. Bowie performed Wild as the Wind, Fantastic Voyage, and Changes the last song as a duet with Alicia Keys. On January 10, 2016, just two days after his final album, Black Star, was released, rock icon David Bowie died of liver cancer at his Lafayette Street home in New York City. Though he was diagnosed with his condition 18 months earlier, Bowie kept it a secret, so his death came as a shock to his friends, as well as his fans. News of death was met with impromptu memorials around the world countless tributes from famous musicians, and a special medley of his most famous songs performed by Lady Gaga at the 58th Annual Grammy Awards. And on November 11th, Japanese video game fans would become the first to get access to Sony's brand new PlayStation 3. The PS3 would be the first Sony system to integrate social gaming features and use Blu-ray discs as a storage medium. Released in North America just six days later, it was initially criticized for its high price and small game selection. Dry martini. Oui, monsieur. Wait. Three measures of Gordon's, one of vodka, half a measure of quinoa lily. Shake it over rice and then add a thin slice of lemon peel. Yes, sir. You know, I'll have one of those. So will I. If you lived in North America and had $250 on November 19th, you could have gotten yourself one of the first Nintendo Wiis. The system was hyped up by a $200 million ad campaign that worked to expand Nintendo's demographic to include parents and grandparents. It was generally well received, but struggled with the perception it was just for casual gamers. On December 6th, NASA made interplanetary news by revealing photographs taken by the Mars Global Surveyor, which depict the presence of liquid water on Mars sometime between 1999 and 2001. The photos would be followed by additional evidence showing sustained water flows at other sites. It's time to play Deal or No Deal. Mom, take the deal. That's right, take the deal. Deal, deal. No deal. It's Deal or No Deal at Toys R Us. Get your game piece in this weekend's paper. Prizes up to a million dollars. No deal. You win. <laughs> Toys R Us, the world's greatest toy store. 
The music world mourned on December 25th after James Brown, the godfather of soul, died of congestive heart failure brought on by pneumonia while at a hospital in Atlanta. The singer's condition didn't seem life-threatening when he checked himself in, and he was still planning on playing two shows he had later in the week, saying, I'm the hardest working man in show business, and I'm not going to let them down. Brown was 73 years old at the time of his death. After spending years in captivity awaiting his fate, former Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein was executed by hanging on December 30th. A video broadcast on Iraqi state television showed the execution live, up to the point the noose was placed on Hussein's neck. Witnesses described the dictator as a broken man, resigned to his fate. And according to media reports, celebrations broke out in Iraq after the execution. And that's how 2006 ended. With the Saddam Hussein era over for good in Iraq, with liquid water making science fans wonder if there could be life on Mars, and with everyone else trying to decide between the Wii and the PS3. Of course, they didn't know Steve Jobs was about to drop the first iPhone. But that's for next year. Coming soon, 2007. So what do you think? And what was your fondest memory of 2006? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other timeline videos.